Good morning. I'm Lynn. I'm Arnie. And welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. The sun is shining today. So, that means... Cutting hay. Try to, for wrapping. So I need two days. Today and tomorrow. And is there any risk right now? 40%. 40% risk tomorrow, right? Yeah, they said, they've been saying 40% for a whole month. I could have been done by now. I know. So it's been really hit and miss. probably rain. So we'll go. Um, I'm going to go do chores. Arnie's going to head out to the hay field. And once I'm done chores, I'll head out there and show you why it's important that we get that hay off right now. Because it is, right? It's important. And do you know what I'm doing different today? Are Lynn, you? Lynn says, <laughs> eye contact. Yeah. So. Eye. Cool. So I told him he always looks away from always the camera. But now I'm not. Now I can't keep my eyes off. See, I'm learning. I'm a man. I can learn. Oh, I'm looking you, at you, you now. Oh, stay focused. You would <laughs> think you could learn something. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Hi, Tommy. Tommy's been fed. He's just guarding his ball. Eye contact, sweetheart. There you go. Here's the man. How you doing? Are you okay back here? Oh, you're, that was a little romp. That was a little romp you did. Hi. Hi. You're looking nice. Well, that time he was over there and he actually did a little hop and a skip and now he's letting me pet him. You are a sweetheart. You're going to fit in just wonderfully. Yeah, you're a good boy. He's not sure of the dogs, so he watches them all the time. But uh, he, maybe he's not used to them, or maybe he was in with dogs that nipped at him. Because usually out in the prairies, they do have dogs for running their animals. Hi. Well, that was a nice greeting anyway, so we know he's doing well. It's a very confident ram. Usually when you go to a new place, you're a little uh, freaked out. Hi, but you're not freaked out. You're really kind. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go do chores now. Apparently, when Arnie was out here with him last night, Tommy was visiting with them. And, oh, here comes Tommy now. But apparently, Tommy was rubbing all over him. And he was just loving it. Was Tom really nice? So, we know he likes cats. And this is Tommy's pen. So, that'll be his companion for now. But like I say, he's not totally alone. He's got a nice door where he can look outside and he's got a whole bunch of rams over here that he can see regularly, but that aren't challenging, challenging him as a newcomer. Because newcomers are always challenged and they'll fight with him. So we're just gonna leave him here, let him settle in. He's doing really well. He's curious about everything. Now he's gonna go check the dogs out. I like that he's not shy like that. Tommy's back there, honey. Yeah, he's curious about the dogs. I wonder, he might have noticed Tommy now. Tommy, come see the, come see Knockout. Well, I'll quickly do chores and we'll check again on the way out. Oh, you are so nice. Oh, and now you're gonna have a rub on the post. He's got a salt mineral. He's got some fresh water there. He's got a drinker too, but I wasn't sure if he knew where the drinker was, so we gave him a pail as well. Pretty rare to get a brand new shape this friendly when you first get them. Oh, you are. 
and toms come into the pen. Tom saw me petting Knockout, so he came over to see him too. Looks like we have another relationship forming here. That's nice. So he has company anyway. I thought I'd come in with Knockout, see how he would respond with me in the pen with him. You are a handsome boy. You're a little nervous. Hi. What's this weird woman doing in my pen? There you go. You want to win something over? You pet him on the chest. They really, really love that. And then they're liable to stay still as you make your way a little closer to them. Hi. You're lovely. You're really lovely. Hi. You're a good boy. Yeah. It's okay to be here. Isn't he nice? You're a good, good boy. visit you so you're not lonely, okay? We have other pens that are a lot um, more isolated than this, but sheep or flock animals, they don't like to be alone. So I figured this was the perfect spot because there's a lot of people moving around and stuff in here. The cats are in here, the fans are in here, and he can see everybody. So he's alone, but not alone. Lovely though. We're gonna say goodbye to you now and we'll see you later, okay? He's back there and I swear he's missing me. Hi buddy, it's okay. It's okay. Hi. Hi, I know. Pretty soon you're gonna have a lot of girlfriends and then you won't look at me twice. I feel so sorry for them. You're very sweet, honey. Let these girls out this morning before it gets too hot. Come on, girlies. There they go. Come on, you guys too. Come on. Out you get. Come on. Come on. Out you get. Come on. Come on. It was a bit of an ordeal getting those lambs outside because every day there's one that gets stuck under the feeder. Every day she goes back in and every day I pull her back out. She's extremely annoying. Cupcake, you're never annoying. You're always just wonderful. Okay, so you guys might want to go out. They still think it's that way, because they're in a new pasture. But it doesn't take them too long to figure it out. And there's always one behind the gate. <laughs> there they go. They're off. These girls are already at the back of the barn waiting for me to open the gate. So we'll head back here. 
let these guys out into their new pasture. As I walk up to the gate, I always make sure that they have their salt and mineral and that it's knocked down if necessary because it's always important that they're getting that. And the drinkers in the heat are especially important. I did a thorough cleaning yesterday, so they shouldn't be too bad today, and they're not. But every now and then, there's some bird droppings in there. But just because they're out at pasture doesn't mean you're forgetting the everyday stuff. They still need all of this. And eating salt actually makes them drink more. So you want that salt there all the time. Hi girls, I sit, take it, this is the Dorset side of the barn, is it? Hi Big Betty, hi. Hi, how you doing? Hi, you're a good girl. You wanna go out, sweetheart? Make way, coming through. Coming through. Hi Chewy, how you doing? Now you guys, I can't open the gate if you crowd it like that. Come on, you're bending it. Move back, move out, come on. Come on, move out. You can't stand there. I don't feel like being trampled. Come on, get little space. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a run and dodge, I think. Because they're back in the, I'm excited to go to the pasture mode again. Once they get used to it, the it won't be such a stampede. But you wouldn't want to fall under these girls because I tell you, they won't walk around you. They'll go right over you. But they're off. They've, they've figured out their entryway. But Arnie cut down all those thistles that were growing up in the entrance yesterday. So they didn't like walking through that. And I don't blame them. They're very prickly. They're all cleared out, so they're free to go. That pasture won't last them too long, even though it's a really big one, but we just haven't had enough rain. But it's grown back enough to probably last them a couple of weeks. And by then, uh, we're gonna be bringing them in anyway, probably, and flushing them, getting ready for breeding. God, does that go fast. And the ewe lambs are heading out now. It's a little hot out there. Again. The boys are still staying in because their paddock was just newly chopped down and it needs just a little bit more growing back up before we let them out. So they, they are good. Oh, <laughs> did that startle you? So these guys have to just, uh, Take it easy in the barn. You can see the, the first thing they do is go to that willow. You can see how well they've trimmed it. And this one's found a little scratching area here on the crossbeam. Everyone's favorite plant seems to be willow. You 
Oh, you see how she's yelling? They don't like to be away from the group, even for Willow. Looney! Looney, it's you! How you doing? There she goes. I finished morning chores and I've headed out to the alfalfa field that Arnie's cutting down right now. When you cut hay, what you ideally want is no clouds, pure blue skies, a good wind always helps because it's like a blow dryer, and you want no risk of rain for about three days. When you have humidity, obviously the moisture in the air makes it much harder to dry the hay. When you are cutting alfalfa as opposed to just mixed grasses, alfalfa is actually considered a legume, which is kind of like a clover. It's really rich in nutrients and it's very dense with leaves and it's very, very hard to dry. So those conditions I mentioned are things that you absolutely want with alfalfa or clovers. But nowadays um, we have silos, we have ag bags, we have wrapper machines like we have. And because it was so difficult for farmers to dry down their premium crops of alfalfa hay, many of them started using those other systems so that they could take their hay in when it wasn't quite dry. Because if the hay, remember that probe we use, if the hay is more than, I think it's 18% moisture, it's going to mold and then it's ruined. And it's very, very, very difficult to get alfalfa down that low in dry form, even in perfect conditions. But weather like this, we ha ha are supposed to have no rain today, but these clouds are a threat. It's like a noose hanging over your head. They shouldn't be there, and they're spotty, and they've been here for like a month. And so you put off haying because it's not ideal, and you put off, and you put off, and you put off, but now the hay is ready. So if you see this hay here, it's down, it's got purple flowers on it. When the alfalfa is in flower, that's when you want to cut it. And when the flowers come off, it's going to get coarse and all the little leaves, which carry all the nutrition, will start to fall off when you cut it and bale it because it's gone past it. And the stalks, they have really coarse woody stalks and the longer you let it grow, the coarser those stalks become. So now you're gonna get woody stalks and no leaves if you wait too far past the, those purple flowers blooming. So I'll bring you over to some standing hay. Today, as you can see, would be considered a high risk day. But this hay has been ready for a few weeks now. And now we have the risk of all this beautiful alfalfa, which is quite gorgeous and lush and nutritious. And it's the right height. And we got a good catch on it. And we have some grasses mixed in as well. But it's prime time. If we wait too much longer for that perfect weather, 
we have the chance of losing all the quality, losing those flowers, losing the leaves, and the stalks becoming coarser and coarser, and that becomes unpalatable, especially for sheep who are finer mouthed and fussier than cows. Cow could get away with a lot more. But because the risk is ever present here, all the farmers are way behind. And I think it's like a Canada wide issue right now. The, the forecast is clear one day. So you plan it all to be cut. And then the next day when you wake up, they're talking about thunderstorms, tornadoes and all that stuff because we have the high humidity. And that has been changing the weather patterns and making things very, very difficult for everyone. So people with silos though, can take a risk a little easier than people who want to try, try to dry bale this. Good luck on dry baling it. Um, those people are going to have a very hard, if not impossible time doing that. But people with bags and wraps and stuff, they are, we can have moisture in the hay, 40 to 60%. We like it around the 40%, but that gives you a lot more leeway. And that's why people are choosing to go with the plastic because it allows them to get feed in when otherwise they couldn't. So Arnie has cut this so that it's laid out flat. You can make it come out in more of a pile, but laying it out flat allows more sun, if there were sun, and air to get at it to help dry it a little quicker. We have, today is Friday, and there is a 90% risk as of today for Sunday. So we want to get the hay picked up tomorrow, baled and picked up tomorrow before that 90% risk of rain comes through. Now, tomorrow, if the forecast said that the rain is gone now on Sunday, and Arnie came and checked this and it, he thought it wasn't quite where he'd ideally like it, then he would delay wrapping it a little bit. But if all is good, that's the plan for tomorrow, baling and wrapping this hay. And he's not going to do this whole field today because it is far too risky. If this hay gets rained on, a little moisture won't hurt it, but a downpour really, really turns it mucky. And it's not like the natural moisture that grows in the plant. The added rain um, really tends to make it want to rot. and get a bad smell on it. And speaking of smells, if you are here right now, it smells like honey because we have so many blossoms on this alfalfa right now. And yeah, it smells really, really nice. The scary thing is with all this honey and all these blossoms around, you would think we would be inundated with bees and I don't see one. It really scares me. I don't see a single bee here. This is, this, this would be a bee's heaven right now. And it's not just our alfalfa field. Everyone's alfalfa field is looking like this right now. Full of uh, pollen. So he's only going to mow down part of the field and then he's that way if if the weather did change and he had to get at it quickly he would have a higher chance of getting all this picked up before a disaster happened and then once all the this stuff is back home and taken care of then he'll make another attempt on another day to get the rest of it down and that's how we're going to have to go at it this summer just piecemeal that way we'll stand a higher chance but we can no longer wait for those perfect weather conditions 
because it seems there are none. so fast. I swear he's trying to knock me over. I think they'd call that a haying accident. I gave the whole story on the alfalfa and the cutting and the weather and the quality. You see what happened to it, eh? What? It's laying down. Where is it laying down? Not too badly. Not too bad, but I think it went down last night with that uh, downpour we had. I was over there. I didn't see it really flat. Yeah, you, can see, you can see it. See it's all bent down. It was <laughs> up quite high. Maybe sure it cut a little bit earlier, but. It's in blossom, so it's fed the roots, eh? Yep. So, yeah, when it's in blossom, it means the roots are getting fed. So you're, I think it's the last cut of the year, you're not supposed to let it go in blossom. Is that right? Oh, no, you let it go in blossom. One cut. One cut, so that, so that it can get nutrition to the roots. Some people will cut their alfalfa before it goes into blossom, and then then you're not allowing the plant to get nutrition itself. So ideally you want to do it when the flowers are there. But you know what? I was telling everybody that it smells like honey here. But what, what do you see or not see when you go over to no the... Bees. Not a single bee. No bees. There should be a million of them in this field. When I, when I was... Uh, well, you can pretty well guess all they am. But when I was a child and you were going to a field like this, you could hear the Yeah. Honey. And it's totally, I don't see one bee or nothing. No, I was out there, I don't see one. No. So you can see what happened here. So this this treatment may be cut a little earlier. They get, higher, they get a higher value of it. But then you got to wonder how much value would it be where the sheep would have trouble eating it because it would be too high in protein, eh? But you see what's happened since we waited. You have this part here, you see? So yeah, this those is part, coarse stems that I was yeah. telling you about. So this, if you look at this, if I go like this and break this off, there is all the value, and that's fiber. Not a lot of value in that. So that's what happened, you see. If you cut it earlier, you could have prevented that a little bit. But, but I'm not quite sure with sheep, but with cows, if you cut it like that, a lot of cows would get upset stomachs. Yeah, they do need some fiber. So they have to have this because they're a ruminant animal. So they have to have what this is called in, I'm not a nutritionist. That's your laxative, but your this fiber. Is, yeah, this is called your scratch for the make them move their stomachs. Now, I'm not sure how much scratch a sheep has to have, but a cow has to have that. And I'm thinking a sheep is going to leave that. Not gonna eat that. So if you go like that, if you see it, it's, uh, I mean, it's really good feed. It's way above average. I mean, way better than just cutting grasses. But um, I'm thinking it'll be fine. Oh my God, you are never gonna believe what happened just now. Um, we went into town to get vaccines for the lambs because they're due for their booster shots in a few days. And before we left, we had called our feed company to tell them that Scott was going to be um, combining our fall barley very shortly. And we needed it sprayed to get the weeds down for Scott. And they said, okay, they'd come by. And we drove around the block on the way home from the store. And right over here, here that's our new seeding where we overseeded with our barley and underneath we have our baby alfalfa growing 
this barley doesn't get harvested till the fall. And when we drove by, the sprayer was in this field spraying the whole field dead. That means all that alfalfa that we planted will die. And an alfalfa field takes two years to grow. It's mind boggling. This is the same company that went into our cornfield earlier without permission and started spraying. But now they've, the cornfield would have needed spraying anyway. But this barley field, you saw it the other day, it's in the milk stage. It shouldn't be sprayed. And underneath we've got those baby seedlings. The spray that kills the weeds kills your alfalfa. That was going to be our prime, prime alfalfa field for next year. And he's totally destroyed it. Unbelievable. These people do not communicate with us. And we told them when we drove by on the road, we said, get out of the field. That's our, that's our alfalfa field. Get out. And we park at the side of the road and he drives by. Like he doesn't talk to us. He doesn't stop. These people, honestly. And yeah, the worst part is that we don't know till our fields. Like we work them. You've seen them. We, we disc them. We cultivate them. We plant them. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of hands-on care to make the best crop possible. Alfalfa is a two-year project. And alfalfa seed is really expensive. And you watch now. Well, now we've lost a field too. A field of hay. Like a big field of hay. But you watch. We're going to have to complain now and fight with that company to get compensated for all of that back again. And you know what? Guaranteed, they're going to make it out that we're the bad guys. You get tired of people. Well, we're going to end on a positive note because we got to be that way. So we're going to remember how the day started with knockout, uh, settling in really nicely and learning how to be handled and enjoying it and making friends with Tommy and then all the sheep running out to pasture. We'll forget that our new alfalfa field was destroyed today. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, thank you for joining us. If you did enjoy your time here, please be sure to give us a like and tell your friends about it. And most importantly, be sure to join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.